Many of us live on the internet, but not everyone knows how everything works, especially when it comes to computers. So here are 10 basic PC components we use today. Thank you for watching. Number one, console. The first personal computers introduced in 1975 came as kits that you had to assemble. These kits, the MITS Altair 8800, followed by the IMSAI 8080. This was an Altair clone. And yes, cloning was a thing that long ago. Both used the Intel 8080 CPU, uh, Central Processing Unit. Bill Gates Allen wrote a basic compiler for the Altair and formed Microsoft. Since then, personal computers have been designed to fit many shapes, sizes, and roles. Now modern computers can be as mobile as a laptop or a tablet, or stationary like a traditional desktop or a gaming rig. Some words designed are focused strictly for work purposes, while others can be custom built to accommodate a computer's design and highlight the high-end equipment used in home computing and gaming. Because of this, there are thousands of variations for common computer consoles, normally composed of a plastic-like material, and oftentimes able to be upgraded with newer components. Number two, the monitor. Uh, when we think of computers, we often think about the display size and clarity of HD. And today, we couldn't imagine working on a computer with a 22-inch flat panel LED display, though this wasn't always the case. Long before the personal computers we know today, the only output you could expect was a printed paper, a magnetic tape, or a ribbon. But this all changed with the CRT monitor. The computer monitor or screen was created in 1897 when Carl Ferdinand Braun introduced a CRT with a fluorescent screen. Known as the cathode ray oscilloscope and in 1905 when Lee DeForest invented the Audion vacuum tube, creating the entire basis of long distance wireless radio communications and electronics. The same technology was used in televisions as well as computer applications, though this has widely been replaced by the flat panel. While flat panel TVs have existed in research labs since 1964, they did not become the main display technology until the early 2000s when the technologies became affordable. They are much thinner and lighter than the earlier 1950s to mid 2000s televisions and monitors, which typically used heavy, bulky cathode ray CRT picture tubes. These days, flat displays are the only way to go and have even made the leap to mobile devices such as phones and tablets. Some PC users now have support for two or more displays in an attempt to immerse themselves in the landscape of their digital universe. Number three, the keyboard. Christopher Lathan Scholes was an American inventor who invented the QWERTY keyboard along with Frank Hall, Samuel Soule, and Carlos Gladden. Originally designed for the typewriter, the keyboard has transitioned for use to the modern computer and laptops. It's so recognizable and useful, keyboards have even been built into phones and programmed to appear on screen typing interfaces. For a time, keyboards were the primary input device for computers and as such still maintain a large amount of functionality, such as keyboard shortcuts that are still available in computer operating systems. See our other video on 10 useful Windows key commands for more details. For desktops and laptops, the keyboard is still the primary input device and the machine will often alert you and may not even attempt to boot if you try to turn it on without a keyboard attached. Number four, CPU, Central Processing. In 1971, the first commercially available CPU was introduced by Intel, the Intel 4004. This was a four-bit central processing unit with, with a maximum clock rate of 740 kilohertz per second. Impressive for its time, it is a relic by today's processing standards. And since the creation of a CPU, the size, power, and purpose has changed as well. Today, processors are available to fill many different roles inside electronics while still serving as the computer's brain. Many other computer accessories also come with their own processors and chipsets developed based on the original processing unit. Though with advances in speed also comes the side effect of heat. All modern processors require the use of a heat sink as well as at least one fan to keep it cool enough to operate consistently. While the CPU may have started as a 4-bit, Today's home PC runs on a minimum of 32-bit processing, while many others 
utilize 64-bit processing power with speeds over 3.6 gigahertz per second. They are designed to fit a specific slot on a motherboard and provide the vast majority of the computer's operations and calculations. Number five, hard drives. The IBM 350 disk file was developed under the code name RAMAC by an IBM San Jose team led by Reynold Johnson. It was announced in 1956 with the then new IBM 305 RAM Mac computer. The capacity of a hard drive has grown exponentially over time. When hard drives became available for personal computers, they offered a 5 megabyte capacity, which is staggeringly small by today's storage standards. During the mid 1900s, the typical hard drive for a PC had a capacity of about 1 gigabyte. As of August 2016, desktop hard drives typically had a capacity of 1 to 4 terabytes, with the largest capacity drives reaching 10 terabytes. Hard drives, or hard disk drives as they are known, are the primary storage device for all computer needs. The hard drives store all the files and data that make up the entirety of the computer's operating system, as well as any personal data such as pictures, videos, and documents. Hard drives are currently built to fit many different sizing needs, such as a 3.5 internal drive for traditional desktops, 2.5 inch smaller versions for laptops and notebook computers, and even smaller sizes which can fit tablets and mobile phones. Number 6, the mouse. A computer's mouse is the second primary input device. The first computer mouse was publicly unveiled in 1968 by its inventor, Douglas C. Engelbart. He invented the computer mouse in 1964, two decades before it would ship with the first Apple Macintosh, where before a computer was either accessed through a keyboard, dials, or a punch card. The trackball, a related pointing device, was invented in 1946 by Ralph Benjamin as a part of the World War II era fire control radar plotting system, called the Comprehensive Display System, or CDS. Benjamin then was then working for the British Royal Navy Scientific Service. Benjamin's project used analog computers to calculate the future position of a target aircraft based on several initial input points provided by the user with a joystick. Benjamin felt that a more elegant input device was needed and invented what they called a roller ball for this purpose. The device was patented in 1947 but only a prototype using a metal ball rolling on two rubber coated wheels was ever built and the device was kept as a military secret. Today we have many different mouse input options including the traditional mouse, a trackball, as well as a touchpad primarily on laptops and notebooks all of which will come in a vast array of shapes and sizes. Number seven, graphics card. Today's computers require the use of 3D graphics though this was not always the case. As recent as 1995, the first true 3D video card was invented that only had 32 megabytes of cache. In 1978, Motorola unveiled the MC6845 Video Address Generator. This became the basis for IBM PC's monochrome and color display adapters, which made its way into a number of first-generation personal computers, including the Tandy TRS-80. 3D graphics started with early display controllers known as a video shifter and a video address generator. They acted as a pass-through between the main processor and the display. As with many other items on this list, today's video cards offer more options, sizes, and speeds to accommodate many different users for the computer itself. Today's highest-end graphics card can have up to 24 gigabytes of RAM on board, and that's more than some devices have total. Number 8, the network card. Most everybody loves the internet, and the internet is simply a large network. This means that every device that connects to the internet requires a network card or a network interface device. Four people are credited with the invention of the modern network card. David Boggs, Chuck Thacker, Butler Lampson, and Robert Metcalf. While many developers have had different ideas about how to make a network function, it all eventually led to the development of Ethernet. Originally designed as an additional card for the motherboard, an expansion slot was added and a card was put into it, and this connects to a cable. Ethernet is still the most commonly found hardline connection 
in most homes and small offices. The tremendous popularity of the internet led to the development of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi offers the same network connection without the need of a dedicated network cable attached. This means your device has more options in the way of mobility. Wireless communications have led to the development of common devices that we tend to rely on today, such as mobile phones, tablets, and Wi-Fi smartwatches. Today the options are limitless when it comes to getting a network connection. Devices can be built with a network card already installed, Wi-Fi present, or with the space to expand. Most modern Wi-Fi comes in the form of a USB connection or is already built in to your pre-existing device. Number nine, memory. RAM or random access memory is used as temporary storage for a computer. When we see a screen, an app, or a website say it's loading, it's talking about RAM. Random access memory is a form of computer data storage which stores frequently used program instructions to increase the general speed of your computer. Robert Dennard was the inventor of RAM. The device was patented in 1968 and he was a pioneer in early digital computer development and invented random access coincident current magnetic storage. Early RAM modules were soldered directly onto the main system board and were physically locked onto the board once installed. RAM allowed the computer to store data that was accessed often and could speed up operation by presenting this data to the user without the need of reading a hard drive a second time. Today's RAM comes in a variety of replaceable types, speeds, and sizes both in physical size and capacity. Many modern computers would simply not be able to function without at least one gigabyte of RAM available and can often handle as much as 24 gigabytes. Number 10, motherboard. System boards, known as motherboards or main boards, are the backbone of almost all devices and common tech we use today. The system board is a vital part of the modern computer to which all other devices and peripherals will attach for functionality. Introduced in 1981, by IBM, the planar board was the first motherboard used in a PC. The chips were wired together and housed with RAM and a CPU and also provided audio as well as many other functions such as ports for a keyboard, cassette tape, and had expansion slots for add-on cards. Today's motherboards are constructed mainly of fiberglass and embedded circuitry and can easily provide all the functionality you need to run a computer including graphics processing, audio processing, and network connectivity. Some variations will have certain functionality based on the needs of the user, such as a gamer who wants to use a dedicated graphics card and not have one built in. Either way, today's motherboards have come a long way from their planar board ancestors, evolving from what were essentially empty board slots to self-contained computers, where sometimes you don't need to add a single thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it or found it informative, please hit the like button share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.